But as I've been kind of looking at this, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing some things that God is doing in the body today. And I'm talking about those that here and other places the Lord has me to, to be able to speak into or they speak into us. And one of the things is the imbalance of the soul. Now, we, we understand sometimes the spirits, we, we, we understand, you know, sometimes the body, but we don't always understand quite in, what is the soul. Do you know what the soul is? Right? It's a good question mark around it. Um, certain definitions, but one is the soul is the seed of personality or a man's will, intellect, and emotion. All lie in the soul. The spirit is a part of which a man communicates with the spiritual realm. The body is a part which a man communicates with the physical realm. The soul is in the middle of these two parts. Now, can I just tell you something? God works in threes. Satan works in twos. What do I mean by that? If he can split something, he can get people on one side or the other. Just look at your politics today. Just look at what we stand on. You know, I've, God has given me the ability and the pleasure and, and the honor to, to be able to be one who leads in many different areas. And I have found one thing, especially after being a, a, a pastor, after being an a, a employer for over 20 plus years, I have found one thing. There is always two sides to every story. Yeah. <laughs> And what I mean by that, there is always two sides in every story that somewhere in the middle you might find what is the heart of what is going on within these two parts. You know, I found that when God works, he works with the Father, the Son, which is Jesus Christ, which Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through who? Him, right? So he is the truth and the Spirit. But the enemy is looking to break us. If you can break us up into two parts then this breeds competition instead of collaboration. What do I mean by that? So, I don't know if Josh has it up there, does he? If you can take those off, Josh, just for a second. I just want to give him a, um, I don't know if you can. But anyways, one side I had just kind of representing kind of basically the spirit, and one side representing the truth. Now, when I look at this, it's I'm going, why are we unbalanced in certain places? Well, sometimes what happens is we actually end up camping out in just one area or the other. But let me just read this to you out of, um, out of John 4, uh, starting in 23 and 24. It says, but, at time, but a time is coming and is already here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit from the heart and the inner self and in truth. Can you say Amen. For the Father seeks such people to be his worshipers. See, God is spirit, the source of life, yet invisible to mankind. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and what? Truth. Now, we're a little bit more charismatic here. Um, Sometimes we can camp out over there. And what I've heard is if we don't have both, what I've seen, if we do not have both the spirit and the truth, you're unbalanced. I've even had spirit-filled believers tell me some of the simplest truths. Well, pastor, I don't really need to walk that out because I prayed and it's done. Well, clearly it's not. (laughs) You see, don't get me wrong. The altar, the spirit of what God does, his spirit that comes to our spirit, man, and brings deliverance. It happens in an instant, okay? Deliverance happens in an instant, but healing happens over time. And there's a walking out of that, that once you've received that place, now it's an infilling of Jesus, which is the truth. Because if we don't get that, we stay imbalanced. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, I thought it was very interesting. Um, when I looked at the the definition of imbalance it says lack of proportion or uh, relation between corresponding things two parts two parts do you see what i'm saying here so god gave his spirit and his truth to ensure a balanced soul and a balanced life in a balanced way you know what's amazing to me is that when we look at just the spirit of god or just the truth of god There have been camps, there have been religions, there have been dogmas made about this. Some will just say, well, it's it's this and it's that. 
And so I want to look at some pitfalls today. Will you bear with me? Because I'm going to need a lot of grace because we're going to get somewhere. Amen. But I want to go into some pitfalls that if we camp out in one area or the other, what can happen? So the spirit. Jesus did it. Amen. So sometimes when we just get all camped out in the spirit of things. And Jesus did it. Well, I prayed and it's done, Pastor. Yes, it is. Amen. Hallelujah. I agree in Jesus' name. But what's the next step with the Father over this issue? What does the truth say? You see, that's, that's also discipleship happens not to come and teach you like, a, like a, a boardroom or professor, but it's to intersect and actually invite the Lord to come in with His Spirit and His truth into the areas that you need infilling. Sorry, sorry, he's trying to talk to me. No need to apologize. <laughs> Technology. <laughs> now, let me go to the opposite end. So, spirit can be kind of this high emotional charge place. Everybody, everybody experienced that? The highly emotional charge place. We need emo- We got emotions. We need emotions. Hallelujah. God gave us emotions. Amen? But it can also come to this side, which is so conservative in its nature that it's fear-based. Well, just the truth and the truth and no spirit. And what does that do? Well, I have to do it. And if I don't do it, that God will destroy me. It's very much law-based. Right? So, I don't want the law. So, I'm going to stay over in this camp. You guys can camp out in the law over there. Well, let me just tell you, who is the law? How was the law fulfilled? Through Jesus. So, how how does then he apply the law today? Was it like the eye for the eye back then? If he fulfilled it, you know, the prophets of old said, oh, if I could only wish to be in when Jesus comes. They're they're prophesying. Do you understand what the new covenant, do you understand what the fulfillment of the law will bring? Do you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes when we only get over in this camp, it's just the spirit of God with with. Maybe or maybe not the truth, but we can start to, in this side of just the Spirit, overlook, overlook certain, certain basic truths that we need to walk out as believers. That's the imbalance. You see, God gave us both, right? He gave us both. Why did He give us both? To, to balance us. So that we would not be wondering, that we would not be thinking, but that we would be in the knowing of what the Father has because He written down His love. Amen? So, this side can tend to sometimes overlook truth and the emotion, right? This time can sometimes be judgmental in the knowledge of their truth. Okay? You see how we're camping out now? Now we're, now this is the body and the unity. But I mean, where's the unity in the body when we're looking to camp out in certain things and punish people on one side or just release things on the other side that is not, it's, it's going out into the ethos that's not helping you very much. You see, the, the, the truth of God, which is Jesus Christ, the word became what? What did it become? Flesh, Jesus, right? So the way we have Through the Spirit of God, the Spirit enlightens us and shows us and awakens us to to the depravity, to the the issues. And then, then we say, you know what? I have no truth in me. I need Jesus. Now, can I tell you on both sides, carry and can carry, not always. Now, just let me tell you, not everybody struggles with this. So, please don't, Pastor, tell me all kinds of things after today. I'm not looking to prick anything. I'm looking to make sure that we understand we need the entirety of the gospel to grow spiritually. Amen? We can get off into the spirit of the Lord and we can find pride. Well, they don't do that. They don't speak in tongues. Over here, they speak in tongues. They're crazy. They're wild. Get rid of them. You see, it becomes this, this answer we're looking for as a corporate answer that you can never give to an individual. 
You can't, you, can't, you can't supply a corporate answer if it's not Jesus. You can't supply a corporate answer to an individual who is looking for salvation. Looking for the truth. Wondering what is going on with inside me. So, both can tend to, to hold up and walk in pride in certain areas. One prays for the gifts. The other one fears the gifts sometimes. One promotes adoption. The other one promotes performance, but they all can end up perform- promoting performance, not a his or there. This one can also, well, if you, you don't speak in tongues, well, then you must not be God's. Well, what is that? Where are we going with this stuff? Why are we so worried about what, what, what's, what the answer is, and why aren't we just worried about what is the Father saying through me, through what is he saying to me? What does the Lord want to bring forth? Amen. You see, this is one of the things that the Lord was showing me. If the enemy can split it into two halves, then what happens is he brings a spirit of competition that brings in the spirit of error. And when the spirit of error comes, we're in trouble. Now, what I mean by that, let me go through and I'll try to find it here. First John 4, 6 says this, we, the disciples, we, the disciples speaking here, who teach God's word are from God, energized by the what? Holy Spirit. And whoever knows God through personal what? Listens to us and has a deeper understanding of who? Him. And whoever is not of God does not listen to us. By this, we know without a doubt the spirit of truth motivated, motivated by God and the spirit of error is motivated by Satan. We can get so high in these areas of the spirit that sometimes we, cho- we choose not to listen to the truth. I can't tell you how many times spirit-filled believers tell me all these things and I'm like, okay, well, they come to me, my, my, my brother, I'm offended with my brother. Okay, have you walked out Matthew? Well, no, I don't. Well, you need to go. Don't come to me. Go to them. That's what it says. Well, you know, I'm just going to pray about it, Pastor. And then they go to the next part. I can't tell you how that's been too, when we have to walk it out with witnesses. Now, okay, have you, have you brought somebody else in to really see if y'all can't win each other over in the reconciliation? These are spirit, spirit-filled believers. Well, I don't think I need to do that. Why? It clearly says in the truth that if you've got this issue in this area, these are the ways that God has given you to walk it out. Why does that go away all of a sudden? How does that go away all of a sudden? You see, that is the wedge that the enemy is using right now is he's camping us in these two areas and they were never meant to camp because they were meant to be together. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You know... So today, I want to look at the importance of worshiping in spirit and in truth. Um, You know, one of the things that the Lord was showing me is if the enemy is looking to bring the competition and the collaboration doesn't happen, I just want you to know that those who are settled with the fullness of the gospel, that need the fullness of the gospel, both spirit and truth, they know there is no competition. They don't walk in competition. There's not a hierarchy in their mindset. There just isn't. They're just so elated to be a son or a daughter of the Most High God. You see, nothing can compete with God. Nothing. Nothing can compete with His truth. There is no competition when it comes to God. Is this making any sense this morning? I was really telling Mandy, I was like, Mandy, I'm, I'm, I'm. she's like, I'm not going up there with you today. I thought that's really comforting. Can 
Can I just tell you something? You're thinking from an outward view right now as I preach this. I'm not preaching this from an outward view of the church, of this building, of this body. There are two sides in you. That's the imbalance I'm speaking to today. What fears you, what makes you fear sometimes, those who stay in this camp, is they fear rejection over here with the intimacy of the Spirit. And this camp right here fears also the same thing when they come to this camp because is this going to say something that rejects me as well? I was feeling really good over here. Whole dogmas have been (laughs) developed around this. For example... What is a dogma? It's inclined, it's inclined to lay down principles as incontrovertible truth, opinionated, assertive, and imperative. Can I tell you right now, if you find somebody that says they're spirit-filled and they're here in this area, I'm not talking about judgment, I'm saying, but when they start to assert their reasons why we don't need the truth, time out. Wait a second. Or over here. Well, somebody's saying, you know what? Well, I'm going to tell you, let me show you in the Word where you don't need the Spirit of God. Time out. These are dogmas. These aren't doctrinal issues. Now, I am not a theologian. I'm just a fisherman. That's all I am. That was wrecked by the Holy Spirit. That was given much grace when I should have been taken out. My experiences are of love. My experiences are of grace. My experiences of our correction. My spirit experiences are, I need the Spirit. I need His truth, right? I camped out in certain areas. I grew up in this area. That's my background. Is using the Word of God like a sledgehammer to beat you over the head. I thought these people over here was the wackiest people in the world. Running around, speaking in tongues, waving flags, jumping on the ground. What is this? The issue wasn't them. Wasn't the flags, wasn't them jumping around. The issue wasn't here, the issue was me. I was afraid of intimacy. with a father that loves me unconditionally. It is, it, I, I didn't realize how, how intimidating an unconditional love with, is. Right? And those are the things that I want to just press upon us this morning. Is that, what camp do you find yourself in? Are you camped out in one place or the other? Let me just read this. According to Genesis 2, 7, it says, God did not make a body and put a soul into it like a letter into an envelope or dust. Rather, he formed man's body from the dust. Then by breathing divine breath into it, he made the body of dust, i.e. the dust. Uh, the dust did not embody a soul, but it became a soul. All right. So have I confused y'all completely yet? Okay. All right, let me ask you this. So here's some other pitfalls. Is on this side, sometimes we can become self-focused. Right? Not other focus sometimes. On this side, on the true side, we can become just other focused just for the sake of trying to please God. Do you understand? So how do we start bringing these two together? What is it that God wants to do in bringing these two together? For example, grace. How do you apply grace? Is it for us just to keep on sinning? Well, of course not. But you see, once the grace has been applied, 
then what I need to do is where I found myself delivered, where I found myself now completely cleansed, I need to fill it because there's open holes. It's like a porous hole. And in that, I have the truth of God that where I need to apply that truth. That's the discipleship path. That's the intentional intentionality of the discipleship path. It's not to just kind of blanket it. Maybe God wants me to read John this week, or maybe God wants me to read, uh, you know, whatever it might be in Acts this week. No, no. You see, there's something that he's doing on both sides as they come together from the spirit and the truth that I start to understand, oh, I see what you're trying to say to me, Lord. I can tell you one of the things too, to love people and to give grace to other people is impossible if you've not received it from the Father. You can't do it. That's one thing I found. I am not going to have grace for this area because I have yet to receive it fully from God. So I apply certain laws. Well, if, if Jesus is the fulfillment of the law, then how does Jesus apply Jesus? Right? You see what I'm saying? Am I making any sense this morning? Okay. Do you all see the imbalance as I talk through this? Can you start to see maybe there's some truth that I need to apply today? Or maybe there's some intimacy with the Spirit that I need today? The heart and the mind. Most of us, and in, 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 in when it comes to the Spirit of God, we... we we experience amazing emotional experiences and we, we, we touches the heart. He touches the heart. The Holy Spirit touches the heart, right? But sometimes in this area, when we stay there, sometimes the emotions can start to rule. Have you ever experienced that? Okay. Now, when they, when they start to rule that way, then what happens? We need, this, we need to Lord, say, Lord, what is the imbalance here? I, 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 received, I, I received your touch. I, I received your revelation. I, I received your deliverance. Now infill me with the truth. Talk to me about this. For example, Mandy, when, when Mandy and I are dealing with things, when we're, she is one of my main sounding boards all the time. And when she says something, I hear instantly the Father, the Spirit of the Lord say, that's not my truth. Because there's something going on in her. She's got something happening. There might be some insecurity. There might be some anxiety. There might be some things going on. All of us have it, right? We're human, right? So I'll ask her right then and there, is that from the Lord? Well, it feels like it is. It's the emotions, right? I get it. You're, you're, you're struggling. You're open. These things don't feel good right now. But is that really what God speaks over you? And ultimately, typically it's, no, it's not. Then what is it? And then immediately she'll go to the promises, the truth of God. She'll start to speak it. She'll start to declare it over her life. I'm a daughter, for example. And sometimes over here, there used to be times when Mandy and I We'll use us as the example. We're good. We're great. Here's what the truth of the Lord says. I believe it. And you can see on us, that's the last thing we believe. <laughs> that is the last thing we believe. Why? There's something going on spiritually. Why isn't this matching up? Why am I imbalanced in this? Why is the spirit in, and why is my spirit man one way, and why is the why is the flesh the other way, and why am I imbalanced in this way? The soul needs both spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we, and this is so beautiful on the on the spirit side, if we're going into science today, which we are, but it can lead with love. Hallelujah! Can you say Amen? Hallelujah! but then afraid of telling the truth in love. <laughs> right? Don't want to hurt anybody. Now that takes relationship. And then sometimes from this side, all we do is look for sin because we worry that love will be an excuse for more sin. So can we just find the sin? Can we just find the sin? Can we just find the sin? Ever have anybody look at you and just, all they're looking for is your sin? You ever experienced that? Is that fun? You sign up for that? No. Let's go into the Word. 
2 Corinthians 3, 13 through 18. But whenever a person turns in repentance and faith to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Can you say amen? Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. Emancipation from bondage. True freedom. Amen. Hallelujah. What starts that path in this, what we're reading here? Repentance. And usually that comes with the Spirit of the Lord to come and say, is this really who you are? Is this really you? Is that really me that you believe about me? How many of you would like to find freedom in certain areas of your life? Hallelujah. We've got a lot of of testimonies coming then. (laughs) Repentance. It's the goodness of the Father that brings repentance. It's seeing how much He loves us and seeing the places that we're broken down. Not Him. But the repentance brings forth that place. So we get to, we were just talking the other day. Even praying prayers out of the Bible, right? Mike? There are prayers throughout the Bible that we can apply to our lives right now through the truth. Amen? We have the tools available today to find the balance in our soul. But if we don't, there's something going on. And that's usually where the discipleship is so needed. You need brothers and sisters right now that are going to send you in and say, what is the Spirit of the Lord saying? And when they speak, is that match up within God's truth? We need to encourage each other and not beat each other anymore. Amen? We need to start looking for opportunity rather than looking for ways we can be tripped up. How many of you are tired of that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it says this in 18, and we all with unveiled faces continually seeing as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are progressively being what? Being what? Transformed into his image from one degree of glory to even more glory, which comes from the Lord who is the spirit. Sometimes when we're walking out in the spirit, I can see it sometimes when things start to shift or, or, or things start to fall or things start to go wrong. It's like, do we really need repentance? Yes, you do. But if I do that, does that mean I lost traction? No, that means you're going from glory to glory. We've got to remain teachable in the spirit and in the truth. Amen? I was talking with a brother, a new brother, that just here recently. We had a coffee a couple mornings, and, I, and I, this was just stewing in me. There's a lot of fear in the body of what you think you must be. And sometimes simple truths knock you way back beyond than I ever thought it would knock you way back and beyond. I'm like, what is going on here, Lord? He said, it's an imbalance in the soul. Somehow we feel like rejection is going to happen on either side. But didn't the cross tell us he's not going to reject us? But he actually accepts us? It says this in John 15, 26. But when the helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is the spirit of truth who comes from the Father, will testify and bear witness about me. Hallelujah. But when the helper comes, do you have the helper, the spirit of the Lord? Do you have the help of the Spirit of the Lord? Romans 12, 1 through 2, 1 and 2, it says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies 
dedicating all of yourself as set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intellectual act of worship. And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be what? Transformed. I'm going to just say right now, transformation is not a bad thing. How many of you love change in your life? then transformation might be a bad thing. <clears throat> Do not be conformed to this world any longer with its super, uh, superficial values and customs, but be transformed, progressively change as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your what? Your mind, focusing on godly values, ethical attitudes, so that you may what? Prove yourselves what is the will of the Lord. That which is good and acceptable, perfect, and in his plan and his uh, purpose for you. Let me tell you right now, you're going to need the spirit and the truth to understand the path and the will of the Father. You can't do it without each. It's like taking away bone and marrow. You can't do it. It dies. So let me ask you today. I'm going to go ahead and have the worship team come back up. I talked a lot, and I don't know how much clear I was really because, to be real honest, I know this is one thing that is, is, is clouding many of us today. Where are you leaning more towards today internally? Okay, let me ask you this way. Maybe this will make more sense. If we didn't have this church, we didn't have any pastors, let me just take them all out. Or any of the gifts, prophets. How would you walk your salvation out today? And what would that look like? Do you need this 1030 time slot? To walk it out? I'm just asking. You see what I'm saying? Because it's not that the refuge and all of us will stand before the Lord that day. He says, you will stand before the Lord that day. But here's the beauty of what he says. It's not about, hey, get, depart from me because you didn't do this for me and you didn't do that for me and you didn't do that. He said, depart from me, I never knew you. So you think, so it's as simple as a relationship, Father. You mean Jesus died so I can have a relationship with you? So thank you, Jesus, of what you did. Yes, what he's done. But now it's time for us to walk that out with him. So, <clears throat> are you more comfortable on just the truth aspect, but the spirit scares you a little bit? Are you more comfortable on the spirit side, but you really don't want to be bothered with the truth? Because if you don't want to be bothered with the truth, then you don't want to be bothered with Jesus. This is where the imbalance is. I have set. And I don't understand what's going on, but I do understand that God's doing something. But I've set with so many believers. And it's clearly when it comes to one simple truth that needs to be walked out for the fullness to come in that particular area of their life. It's a big fat no, I'm not doing that. And to me, that is a, that's one of the issues that we have today, inwardly, is are we, allow, are we ready to allow the fullness of the gospel to come? Or was this just a box that we mark off? Because there is so much freedom that awaits you in a, in a place, in a world that is so full of all kinds of things. I met with Roberto this week and we were talking through some things and it was like, I love his heart. He said, well, Pastor, you want me to just go ahead and tell you all my sins again? I said, no, I don't need that. I love the heart. I really do. Amen? Amen. He's like, thanks, Pastor. I'm not coming to talk to you anymore. <laughs> but the heart was, I don't want anything between me and dad. 
I'm like, that's, that's it. That's what you talked to him about right there. It's that simple. We make it so hard. Why? We were just talking about this yesterday too. Andy and I, just the other day, at men's group yesterday morning. Well, what about this? That's between them and the Father. Why are we trying to make a, this, this dogmatic thing either here or this dogmatic thing either here? Why are we trying to put camps up? Why are we trying to put flags up either here or here? Why can't we just come together with the Holy Spirit empowered by what the, 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 the actual truth of the Father is and know that He has died for us to come into relationship with Him that we may actually walk as sons and daughters into the kingdom right now? Because people are tired of fighting on two camps because that's everyone. They live that every single day. We were even talking about this the other day. Is what does it mean if we were to actually be secure in who we are, sons and daughters, working together, not worried about what you're going to get over on me. Getting real with the inside places and not trying to fix the outside places. Is this too heavy this morning? I hope you're telling me the truth. My heart is for unity in the body. But if you're divided within, it's going to be hard to want it from without. Um, he, here's, the fear to be wrong keeps the spirit of competition in place. What if we were to come together and collaborate and, and say, oh, oh, I was wrong there. Yeah, I was. Or there's a revelation to be gained like, that's in God's word? Chad spoke this men's group. And he said, you know, I grew up in church and even went to a Christian school. He said, it wasn't until two years ago that I learned I'm a son. We all want to be accepted because inherently that's a need that was placed inside of us when he created us. You're accepted not by what you do, not by what you do, but who He is. You know, how can I have so much faith in the most dire of situations or the most sinful situations or the most ugly of situations? It's because that is the exact place that Jesus came in full love, in full grace and intersected my life and said, yes, these are dirty and yes, these are nasty and yes, what you walked out, it has nothing to do with me, but that's not who I created you to be. You see, I believe it's time for us to come together. What are true worshipers are those who worship in spirit and in truth. Amen? Amen. Romans 6, 20. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. You had no desire to conform to God's will. So what benefit did you 
get at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? None. For the outcome of those things is death. But now, since you have been set free from sin and have become willing slaves to God, you have your benefit resulting in sanctification, being made holy and set apart for God's purpose. And the outcome of this is what? Eternal life. God is doing something in this hour. I can see it. I hear it. I hear it in our, y'all's testimonies when I meet with you guys. When I hear y'all's hearts. Something's happening. There's a correction coming. There's a unity coming. There's power. There's joy. But can I tell you something today? If you feel like you're in process and not getting anywhere, that does not mean you're in failure. That means you're going from glory to glory. Amen? So sometimes in this hyper-spirituality that we sometimes can find, that somehow we're, we're dealing with things, must be wrong, that's a lie from the pit of hell. If he's... If he's gleaning, if he's bringing these two together, you see, there's no more tear. Then, you know what? We have nothing to be afraid of. If I have the Spirit and His truth, I have everything that I need to walk it out. I'm not afraid to say I don't know. You know why? Because I do it every day. What do you say, Father? I don't know. We sometimes feel like on this side, we got to be ready for the answer all the time. And you're saying, you're looking for some other answer other than Jesus. He is the answer, amen? Amen. Have, Have you seen the... This is where, does this make any sense where this is some imbalance here or not? Okay, good. Good. I can tell you, Jeremy and I, we've worked together, what, nine years now? And I know there's times when he's come in and I have made him mad. Because over here on this side, we're, we're agreeing. We're like, yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Spirit of God is moving. Hallelujah. And there's this one little area. And I go, but Jeremy, right about here. Oh, I didn't want to talk about that. I didn't want to talk about that. But Jeremy, this is a promise over you. Don't reject it. It's not a condemnation, but it's to set you free. So drink it in. Eat it up. Because this is what he's calling you to. It was the Spirit of the Lord that said, Jeremy, I'm calling you. Come, son, I have what I have for you. Now read my promises over you and read about how good and great and who I am as your father. Sometimes we need to be reminded of the promises. Amen? What is the Spirit of the Lord saying to you right now? There is so much beauty that awaits you in his truth. There is so much beauty because the truth is Jesus. The truth is Jesus. The truth is Jesus. Amen?
Why don't you stand? I'm going to have the prayer come, team come up. Remember, this isn't about who's right, who's wrong. It's about what's going on inside you. Amen? Do you agree? You got anything? Okay. I'm looking for some confirmations this morning, as you can tell. If we separate these two, you remain imbalanced. So typically what happens with me, just an example, I'm not saying this is so saith the Lord, okay? Please don't take that. Your solution is between you and the Father, okay? But the Spirit of the Lord quickens me, starts to reveal things in revelation through the Spirit of revelation in me. As I ask Him what is going on, He starts to touch it with his spirit, my spirit. Deliverance starts to happen instantly. Amen. Hallelujah. And then all of a sudden, it's like this. It's just where it happens. It's amazing. And it's just a slow walk with the Father. And he points me. After the touch, after the revelation, after the deliverance, to everything that I need for my healing. Everything that I need for my healing. It's right here. Not, it's the reason why I said spirit and truth, not truth and spirit. For the spirit of the Lord is hovering over you, brooding over you, ready to speak life into you. Just like he's spoken into into us. But if we remain split, or even if we try to make it in the middle, you're imbalanced. Many of us, and I have found this, and it broke my heart this Sunday, Saturday, and always does, when I, we were talking and... Well, you know, I really would like to be closer to God, but, you know, I just don't have time to read the Bible. A lot of people think that way. It's okay. But we've made it into, when that happens, we've come back over here, we've made it into a a performance act that hopefully he's pleased with us. But if I remember, he went to Calvary a long time ago for us. And he didn't stay there either. I have to be sacrificed with him. I have to be buried with him in order to be raised anew with him. This is the progression of it. This brings balance. Amen? Jeremy's done the same with me. Well, Pastor, I I hear this now. I hear you in the spirit, but I hear the truth. Well, I don't really know if that's it. I go home and I'm like, yeah, that's exactly it. Let me chew on that. Let me eat that up. He said he's the bread of life. Amen? Amen? If your spirit man is not eating of God's truth, then what does your spirit man look like? I'll never forget it. Many years ago, I was about to preach at another church, and I said, Lord, show me, Lord, in the spirit, what, 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 what is going on here? And right then and there, the Lord started to show me as people filed in just like you. All of a sudden, all I saw were the clothes gone, and, and they looked like the emaciated Jews from the Holocaust. And he says, this is their spirit man and woman. Is your spirit man, is your spirit woman, is, is, are, they, are they eating 
or are they hungry? And I wept and I wept. I said, Lord, Lord. He said, this is the condition. He said, but son, but son, but son, I'm coming. I'm ready to pour out my spirit on all flesh. Here in the past couple of weeks, we've been really preaching for that religious spirit of man, not true religion, the religious spirit of man to be broken off of all of us here. And in doing so, I'm going to tell you right now, it's fantastic to watch, but there is real dealing right happening in y'all. Even to the point, it's like, you know, why am I judging these people the way I'm judging them? Why am I expecting of this of them when, when, when I don't even expect that of myself? Why would I condemn them when God has clearly forgiven me? Amen. Amen. What is my love? Is it His? Or is it some manufactured thing that doesn't look right? So here's my prayer today. The altar's open. Here to pray. But if you just need agreement this morning for the balance to be back in your life, I want you to go ahead and come on up. I want to pray over you. So go ahead. I'll wait. Maybe it's one side or the other. I, I've been doing this all week. So I've been at the altar all week on my own stuff. I'm going to want to pray over you to, 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 to open some things, unlock some things. Amen. And if you're not here, would you just stretch your hands toward those who are up here this morning and just agree with me in prayer? And if you're up here, I just want you to repeat after me. Keep your eyes closed. Just repeat after me. Father, I thank you. You didn't leave me lacking. You didn't leave me unbalanced. You gave me everything I need. So I repent today for not taking the tools that you've given me. And walking those out with you. Forgive me. I try to do it apart from you. And I can't. So I say today, Father. Give me a new hunger for your spirit. Give me a new hunger for your word. Teach me. Guide me. Direct me. I'm ready to learn more about your spirit, your unconditional love, your grace. I will not fear man any longer. I'm tired of that. But Father, renew in me a fear of you. That even though you can do whatever you want with me, And you would be justified. Through your son, you said, I want to forgive them. I want relationship with them. So today, renew in me, Father, that intimate relationship that I once feared. And bring balance to my soul. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So, Father, I just thank you. I thank you for what you did here this morning, Lord. Lord, I pray that, Lord, anything that was of me may have died a thousand deaths right now before anybody leaves this room. Yes, God. Yes, God. But, Father, I pray what was from you. May it, may it chase us until it becomes actual. Father, I pray right now, Lord, 
all the judgments on everybody here in this room today that they continue to listen to and they continue to agree with, I just hear the Father saying, I am taking those away today right now in Jesus' mighty name. You will no longer be deaf out of certain ears because he wants to speak. Father, forgive us for judging others. But let us come in to the light of glory today. (laughs) Jesus' name. The Refuge is located at 130 Gulf Freeway North in League City, Texas. Come join us Sundays at 1030 a.m. We value his presence and we value his people. Find out more at www.therefuge.live.